Content warning. Disgusting, terrible, and evil. You have been warned. That pie man shit is exactly why I stay away from 99% of the commentary community at this point. You don't know who these fucking weirdos behind a screen are, and when you read shit like that, it makes you want to eat a 45 barrel and slam the trigger like a Red Dead ability. Persona! Ladies and gentlemen, we have a series of allegations on YouTube today. Again, more allegations. But these allegations don't involve anyone notable. They involve people with five subscribers. But I'm a bastard, so I'm talking about them. Fashionably late, nonetheless. Anyway, uh, yeah, let's do it. What's up, guys, and welcome back to the Tom Dark channel. I am your host, Tom Dark. Boy, do I have a story for all of you. I hate everyone. I hate children. I hate Discord. And seeing how that equates to about half of the room temperature IQ people these days, seeing how that Venn diagram intersects, it just so happens that I hate every single one of you. It's been a while, hasn't it? It's been like 10, 11 days or something like that, almost two weeks. Um, the longest I haven't posted here in a while. My channel is, is dying. It's over. Uh, everyone's unsubscribing, they're leaving. The rise and fall of Tom Dark, the arc has happened, as far as I'm concerned. I disappeared like animated James. In all seriousness, I was just working on some main channel stuff in the last, like, week and a half or so, and I didn't feel like making any Tom Dark stuff, like, at all. But today we're back with one of the most disgusting stories to ever come out of the commentary community. It is truly a tale of degeneracy, and just the worst Discord shenanigans you can possibly imagine. <laughs> So all of this started with this tweet from a small commentator named Pie Man, who some of you are likely familiar with. He's been referenced in one of my videos before. And basically, like last week, he put out this long, long document, which according to him at least is all true, and basically discusses this like CP ring like going on in the commentary community. It's like a bunch of Twitter freaks that are like exchanging a bunch of uh <laughs> a bunch of very illegal materials. And as soon as I saw this shit, I was like, what the hell? Why is this real? Because a while ago, Pie Man had kind of a sus among us incident with a girl who was a few years younger than him, and his messages there were kind of weird, but everyone was like, all right, it's not that bad. I mean, they're both kids, right? It doesn't really, it, it, it doesn't really matter that much. And if you guys remember, John Swan was one of the people who went after Pie Man, and he did some bad shit there for sure. Uh, he, he definitely overplayed his hand, and that was called out a bit by a bunch of people, including Willie Mac Show. No, 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 no. Leave the internet. Now, if you know Pie Man, he's, he's very open with the fact that he struggles with some social issues. Most, if not all my, you know, close friends are um, people online. John knew that and was still posting things like, how can you control that? Step one is to remove yourself from the internet to ensure that you will not fall guilty to the same urges again. Remember, you were being turned on by a literal child. Literal child. Literal child. But this time, a lot of people are like, hey, uh, Pie Man, Mr. Pie Man, what happened to you being a victim there? What happened to that big guy? It seems like nothing has changed, buddy. I personally expressed my own disgust over this in a few tweets, and I still obviously feel that way. But it is interesting to keep in mind here that this is not involving anyone with a lot of subscribers, right? This is literally like 10 Spurgs on Discord who have no following or virtually no following and somehow this incident got the entire community talking about it. Like people who do have actual followings. I mean, Augie talked about it, Nick talked about it on Twitter and probably on stream. There was like a Twitter space where Keemstar was like clued in on it a little bit, I believe. So clearly because of the contents of it, there is some level of interest in the story here. And in this case, Pie Man is not the only person implicated, but the document itself details some very gross shit in particular about someone named Satanic Antifa. Who would have guessed someone with that name would be, uh, fucking evil? Who- who could have possibly predicted Satanic Antifa would be, like, you know, kind of a fucked up guy? But you know what? Without further ado, without beating around the bush anymore, let's read this thing and really get into the meat bones, and, uh, CP of this situation. Many of you might know a 17-year-old Twitter user slash former small commentator called Lucy, who has had many different accounts, current one being at Satanic Antifa. He also used to go by LMM Skits until a year or so ago. For the last approximately five months, I have developed a close friendship with him, often, as many others did with him too, exchanging nudes and sexting him. <laughs> of course, I'm embarrassed to say that, I don't want to make that public, but sadly I have to. To give context, 
to some very disturbing things I found out about Lucy. Like I said, a lot of this is very uncomfortable for me to make public, and some of it shows how I'm a shitty person, but I need to expose him. Lucy has a rape fetish. He is really into rape roleplay, and he talks about who he wants to rape and which of his friends he would brutally rape given the chance. On its own, while well, very weird- What is this? Why am I re- I fucking hate all of you people. You all suck, okay? <laughs> Why did I come back to this channel? I didn't want to post anyway, and I'm coming back to talk about whatever the fuck this is. <laughs> On its own, while very weird, this was not something to cut ties over, and it seemed to me to all be a fantasy for him and not a real urge. I let him talk about raping people when we were sexting, albeit I often tried to steer this particular fetish into dirty talk about him raping me, as him talking about raping his slash my friends made me very uncomfortable often, and I'd rather him talk about doing it to me. Dude, it sounds like you just are like into whatever he's into. It doesn't sound like I don't know who you're saving with the, with this like <laughs> I needed to steer it to me. No, you just liked it. You just liked it, bro. The red flag came after a poor taste joke I made. A few days ago, Lucy was horny, talking about raping Grayson, a 14-year-old close friend of his. What? <laughs> you people suck. And I made a joke saying, well, if you want to rape him so much, then just go over there and do it. I often make jokes when I'm in uncomfortable situations, as my friends can attest. I now realize making this joke, no matter the context, was shitty of me, and if you're reading this, I apologize to Grayson. Now this was a joke, as it was absurd to me that Lucy would try to do anything IRL, I still trusted him, and although I thought his interest was weird, I thought it was just a fantasy in his head. This was not the case. This is where it gets serious, guys. This is where it gets fucking real, okay? This is where the rubber meets the road. This is where the condom meets the ass. This is where shit gets really fucking intense. Lucy got really interested in the idea fast. He talked about where they would meet, the dates he could go, how he would try and get away with it, that sort of stuff. He even messaged Grayson about meeting up. Lucy many, many times said to me he was 100% serious about raping Grayson IRL. He was actually planning to rape him in real life. This was too far for me. This and something else which I'm going to talk about now were the reasons I decided to gather evidence to expose him. Lucy has a boyfriend that isn't in the community, and he talks about him often with me. The same day, he talked to me about raping Grace in IRL. He brought up something disturbing he said he did with his boyfriend. Lucy said that his boyfriend has involuntary age regression some- What is all of this- I feel like I'm- Like, this is just the worst thing ever. This is the worst- This is the worst thing I've ever read. <laughs> what, what is it with all this, like, cancerous terminology? Like, he has a fetish- and he, he he age regresses and mommy milkers and I thought he was gonna do it like I just I just hate all of it This means that Lucy's boyfriend involuntarily mentally retreats to a young age very young according to Lucy as a coping mechanism due to stress or prior trauma According to most experts someone in the process of age regressing often cannot give proper consent and having sexual relations with them can be a form of rape Lucy admitted to me that he manipulates his boyfriend to send images when he is age regressing He himself also calls it rape getting off to the non-consensual nature as well of how young of a mental state his boyfriend is in in the age gap. Lucy says he's young to the point where he says dat- oh, no, 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 why? Kids these days so fucking disgusting with their fucking daddy and kitten fetishes. Getting off to raping someone who acts like this and has the mental maturity of a toddler was really creepy and gave me pedo vibes. You guys see, he gave him- he gave him pedo vibes, okay? There was the vibe, he wasn't sure, but the vibe was there, you know, the feeling was in there. It's like when you walk into a room, sometimes you get the pedo vibes. That's what he was experiencing. Oh no. So after this and the Grayson incident, I decided to investigate further. While up to then I had pushed back a bit on some of the extreme stuff Lucy said, I wanted to investigate just how far Lucy was down the pedo pipeline. The pipeline. <laughs> you guys thought the alt-right pipeline was real? You guys thought the PewDiePie pipeline was real? You ever thought about the pedo pipeline? And I could not confront him right now directly, so I pretended to be into whatever he was into to keep his trust and hopefully get enough evidence to catch him, which I ended up doing. Bro, no, <laughs> why? Ah! One of the first things I did was try and find out just how young he was attracted to. I, I, I hate, why am I reading this? Why am I, this is, t this is just bad. This is not, this is not even entertaining. This is just disgusting shit. I hate all of this. I sent him safer work pictures of kids from Google Images in decreasing age order and asked him for each one whether he would have sex with them. <laughs> this is, okay, I just gotta keep reading. He stopped at six years old. This is when I knew without a doubt he was a pedophile, 
by the colloquial and scientific definition. Then, after that, disturbingly, he kept asking me whether I wanted to see a video he had of a 10-year-old being raped by his father, which he saved. He said that a while back, he had messaged a 10-year-old on Snapchat and got a video of him being... <laughs> he... <laughs> I... He could recall many details about his interactions with this 10-year-old. After asking me multiple times, I decided to say yes to him sending the video over Discord, but only to report it to the FBI, without telling him. He sent the video and I submitted a tip to the FBI about Lucy having possession of child pornography, using what he sent as evidence and sending them links to Lucy's social media and all I know about him IRL. <laughs> As soon as I did that, I asked Lucy to delete the video off Discord, which he did. So, you're telling me that in order to report someone, you decided to incriminate yourself by downloading CP to your computer. I, I just, I mean, the logic here is truly mind-boggling, mind-blowing. Truly, we are dealing with a genius of impressive intellect if you are saving illicit material of a fucking 10-year-old to- I, I just- <laughs> Kids these days are crazy! Lucy also said he used to have more videos and photos of young children, but he deleted them out of fear. I also asked Lucy that even though he was into kids as young as seven, what was the youngest he would rape? I wouldn't even rape you. Lucy said he would rape a 12 year old if he was guaranteed to not get caught and that he had groped someone at his school in the past. I could have exposed him then, but at that point of time, I deleted the screenshots I had as I had already sent a tip to the FBI and Lucy had potential blackmail on me. You see, Lucy doesn't just sex me, he sex quite a lot of people, including some of my friends. From a few months back, Lucy had been offering to send images of my friends, many different friends, from when they had sexed him. I said yes in almost every instance. However, I never saved any image, as Lucy deleted them from Discord as soon as I was done with them. I felt, and still feel, extremely embarrassed and shitty for doing that. The stuff I did was horrible, and I was a terrible friend to so many for doing it. I'm really sorry, and I can't apologize enough. I understand this might ruin friendships, and honestly, it's quite justifiable due to how shitty I've been, but it's true that I feel nothing but remorse for my actions. This getting out was the reason it didn't come out with the stuff I knew about Lucy beforehand, as he knew all of this about me, as he supplied me with the pictures and videos. However, soon after I realized that this was bigger than just me, and I needed to expose Lucy for being a pedophile rapist. Oh man, okay, 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 I just gotta, we're almost there, there's not that much left. There's not that much left. I just gotta fucking finish. I just- I just need to make it through. I need to make it through, okay? Before I planned to collect the last of the evidence slash admissions, I wanted to warn Grayson to not meet with Lucy IRL like he had planned. I DM'd him to back out of the arrangement, carefully telling him to not alert Lucy to the fact I had said this to him, because I still needed his trust for a full final confession. I already knew it was all true, but having a conversation in one message would be way better slash easier. However, if there's one thing you can't rely on Grayson for, it's keeping his mouth shut. Grayson ended up leaking our DMs with Lucy, and he started to panic, realizing I had been tricking him. I still attempted to keep some trust and pretend to still want to be his friend and stuff, saying things like that I wouldn't reveal anything else, or that I kept my DMs with Grayson a secret, because I liked seeing him happy, talk... T talking about raping a 14-year-old. I did this in the hope that I could get a full confession. Lucy basically admitted to all of this, by the way, in the videos below. Ah! I fucking hate you. I fucking hate all of you. I fucking hate you. Yeah, uh, real talk, I know these videos are important for context or whatever, but considering what happened so far in this document and the fact that this guy literally saved illicit materials to his computer, uh, there's no way I'm clicking on any of these links. I'm not trying to stumble across some illegal, disgusting shit that I have to then explain to the FBI agents monitoring all of my online activity. Not to mention the fact that I just don't want to be mentally scarred by whatever the fuck could be linked in this document. Not clicking that. I'd like to, uh, you know, formally apologize to all of the FBI interns monitoring all of my online activity. You will not be getting a bonus this month for catching some freak. Unless you want to go catch any of the people listed here, in which case I encourage you. Honestly, given the absolute grime all over all of this, I have no real desire to click any link anywhere in the immediate future. Like, I feel like I need a fucking shower. I feel like an old man looking at these kids like, Goddamn kids these days! with all their femboys and traps and kittens and daddies and pedophilia. What is it with every other 13-year-old being such a goddamn freak? As seen above, Lucy admits to everything which she was saying in the days prior. A few hours after this, when he got back from work, Lucy suddenly changed the story, saying that everything he had said about wanting to fuck children as young as seven was actually a lie, 
and that the video he sent of a 10 year old being raped by his dad was actually just a video he found off a rape video site that looked like it was a young boy being raped, but it wasn't. This doesn't explain why Lucy said he deleted all illegal material and why he was scared of the FBI investigating him, however. Also, Lucy later changed his story about Grayson multiple times. I believe his story now is that he couldn't have planned to rape him because he does not have a driver's license. But you can decide the veracity of this story for yourself. I later called Lucy for a while as well, but it didn't resolve much as most of it was him talking about his personal life and how terrible it would be if I exposed him. So yeah, in short, Lucy is a rapist, likely pedophile, and it sickens me that someone I considered to be my friend for almost two years was someone this deplorable. Motherfucker, you knew he was this deplorable for weeks and you didn't do shit. I, I just, I don't understand how any of this even came to be. Like, why are you messaging any of these fucking people? So, uh, yeah, wow. What a wacky story, right? Uh, what a, what a terrible, terrible fucking tale. Like, the worst I've ever read. I initially saw this on my timeline and I think I was probably one of the first people to see it. I saw it when I had, like, two likes. I, I think it was, like, 11 at night for me or something and I was, like, scrolling through my phone. Uh, in fucking bed and then I came across this cancer and I was like, I was like, what is this? Maybe I'll check this out. Maybe I'll give this a little read. And initially I think I might have read like three paragraphs of it and then I was like, <laughs> this is the worst thing I've ever read. Not going to sleep thinking about this degeneracy. I need to watch videos of, of cats and puppies or something like that to, to really scrub my mind of even the beginning of this, right? So I sent it in like a group chat and I was like, this is like the worst, most degenerate, disgusting thing I've ever read. Uh, click on it at your own risk. Uh, and like, I didn't really think about it after that for that night, but the next morning I woke up and it seemed like everyone was fucking talking about it. Okay. There was sort of a canceling of Pie Man over this. And I get that he deserves criticism for all of this for sure. Even if he's being honest with his intentions throughout all of it, like, you know, I think he is like, he, he is pretty young still. I think he's 16 or something, which is pretty young. But even at that, like he did, he did, he did, uh, involve himself in some disgusting shit, right? Especially the part about like accepting nudes from from his friends or whatever that like he, he like like they had no idea what was going on. That was pretty fucked up. But really he seems to think that he can like come back to the internet right now and that that's the best thing for him. He posted another twit longer where he like cleared some things up about all of this and said there was some false information being spread. I guess some of the names he had named initially in it were like not completely accurate. I don't exactly know. I don't care to become the historian on this on this on this particular arc. I don't care to look super deep into it uh to be honest it really is just gross and like <laughs> i figure it would make a good a good video topic but beyond that like i'm not uh i'm not going to be the one to unravel the threads here if someone else wants to do that if someone else wants to make the rise and fall of pie man okay the rise and fall of the small commentary community you can do that but regardless of any of that like pie man i think the message that you need to be told and he did message me saying that like there was some misinformation about it he was like i'm gonna come back and clear my name a little bit and i, I basically messaged him back and i was like you can't do that you got to just go like you got to just go and get help because clearly the internet right now is not working out for you if you keep getting sucked into these degenerate circles of people. You can't be having incidents like this every six months when you're clearly like to some level unstable and constantly tweeting about how sad and insane you are. You say you're trans yet you're like a big like Nick Fuentes supporter. Uh, I saw you on Kiwi Farms talking about how like <laughs> European culture is superior or something like that. I don't really care that much. I mean, you're young. Maybe you'll get over that stuff, but I don't think that the internet is a great avenue to like explore yourself exactly, right? Like I think you should leave. I think you should go and like talk to some real life people. I think you should maybe join a club. You know, maybe sports aren't your thing. Maybe there's something else you need to be involved in, but rotting on the internet all day is clearly not working out for you. I told you this a long time ago, and now I think you got to hear this again. All the shit you're involved in right now will truly never really, really go away because you're online. All of the degenerate shit you're involved in that is made public is engraved into your history on the internet now as a public figure. And so none of this stuff is stuff you can just like move past right now or, or take back. You clearly are a pretty talented guy, right? I've seen some of your videos, and despite how derivative some of them are of other people's work, you know, we all do that at early stages in our in our YouTube career. You know how to write, though. You know how to edit, and I think that's awesome. But spending this much time online when your mental health is so clearly fucked, like your judgment is so fucked, uh, and it's obvious to everyone that that's the case, is not good for you. So honestly, my, my advice, okay, if you respect my opinion, if you respect my, you know, my position as a creator at all, I know you've told me that you looked up to me a little bit in the past, uh, I think the best case scenario for you right now is that if your parents are unaware of this shit, then go tell them, honestly. And it's going to be fucking embarrassing. It's going to suck. But you need to go tell them that you're being a freak on the internet and tell them that you need help. Maybe you'll get sent off to boarding school. That probably wouldn't be bad for you. Maybe you'll get sent off somewhere else. But just go somewhere where you can like be around normal people for a little while. Make some real-life friends. Have some real-life experiences. 
all of this cancerous internet stuff has not benefited you in any way, and honestly, I doubt it will anytime soon. Some of this comes across like a cry for help, so definitely you need to get that help. It will not come from YouTubers, it will not come from the internet, and it will not come from seeking out lonely freaks on Discord. It will come from mental health professionals, a support system in your life, and your family. Go away from the internet for a while. Like, fucking go. And the most disappointing part of all of this is, like I said, like, I think Pie Man is actually kind of talented. Like, he's good at making videos, at least much better than 99% of small YouTubers. He has a decent grasp on editing and pacing and writing. And while his videos do have a few glaring flaws in terms of research from time to time, if he managed to just spend a little more time on that phase of making videos, he would probably have a decent sized channel. One of the most popular and famous Minecraft YouTubers of all time is Stampy Cat, who dominated the Minecraft Let's Play genre in the mid 2010s. Many people who grew up on his Lovely World series, such as myself, can remember that he was not alone in his adventures, but had many helpers, which not just assisted him in videos with building and entertainment, but had continuing roles within the lore of the series. As of 2021, none of Stampy's old helpers appear in his videos anymore. Instead, three new helpers, William Beaver, Polly Reindeer, and Fizzy Elephant, who are relatively personalityless and plain, help Stampy out. Since gamer tags are now disabled in this world, these are likely other people or even hired people. But what happened to Stampy's old helpers? Well, let's start from the beginning. And this is all stuff he's been told before. I mean, this video itself has 750,000 views. That's a lot of fucking views, okay? That's not like a little bit of attention. Most people will not see that in their lifetime on YouTube of making videos. And in my opinion, he has some real promise as a creator. But instead, he decided to spend his time on Discord meeting these fucking freaks and being one himself. This seems to be an issue with a lot of kids online right now where they get wrapped up in this gross shit on Discord and for meeting anime profile pictures on Twitter. Certainly, the internet has some cool things about it, but when you're that young, and you need help, it's not a conducive place for you to be, right? It's not a good place for your mental health. Being so lonely and like gravitating towards other lonely people will oftentimes result in some predatory and unscrupulous figures coming out of the woodwork. And make no mistake, there are many freaks out there who you do not want to meet. So get in a sound space of mind, bro. Take your fish oil, okay? Get some fish oil. You need all the oils in the world, okay? Eat a salmon, eat some salmon, eat some haddock. That will make you normal and right. Vitamin D, fish oil, uh, milk, raw eggs, monster energy, okay? Those are the things you need to be a beast. To be a beast! So yeah, that's pretty much the end of this disgusting story. I just wanted to kind of explain what happened and give my own take on it. Um, there's not a lot else to say about it, honestly. It's it's just, it's just something that's been on my mind for a few days since it happened. I haven't quite been able to shake it, and I guess this will be my opportunity to vent a little bit, okay? To vent my frustrations with the world, to explain my feelings, to explain my emotions, and uh, now it's all out there. What is this guy's username? Rip off my balls, clap me from the back, cream on my face. Anyway, if you guys liked this video, then be sure to leave a like. If you disliked it, leave a dislike. If you have any thoughts on all of this, then be sure to leave them down in the comment section below. If you got any stories of Discord degeneracy of your own that you want to share with me, with Tom Dark, with the Tom Dark Nation, hopefully stuff you were not involved in, then be sure to leave that down there so that uh, people can shame you into self-harm. I mean, so that people can be supportive of your mental health journey. The journey to contracting HIV via a hole you didn't know opened at all just a few hours ago, but is now the biggest opening on your body. Uh, yeah, that's all I really gotta say. Subscribe or something. Sorry for not posting for so long. Um, I was kind of depressed, but I'm back now. I'm gonna try to post as often as possible. No promises if it's gonna be daily uploads, but, uh, yeah. I'm back. Bye.